man once said, is the story of soldiers. He might have added, but not all of them are soldiers of war. For instance, the soldiers of medicine fight not to take human life, but to save it. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. It was going to be a big day in Midvale, that day in the summer of 1904. A special train was on its way. A train bearing the President of the United States. Everyone was gathering to give him the rousing welcome he deserved. I happened to be in the neighborhood that morning. I'd driven down to the Mexican border to treat a patient. And I sure didn't want to drive home again without a chance to see the President and hear him speak. Hello, Sheriff. Doc Baxter, does it take a president to bring you to Midville? <laughs> the president and a man named Hank Gillis who come down with a bad case of the mumps over here. Is that the special? Yeah, that's her. Ought to be here in a couple of minutes now. Pardon me. Sheriff, I'm looking for my dad. Have you seen him? No, I haven't, Tommy. But he shouldn't be hard to find. Your dad's not in jail for a change. Try one of the saloons. Any saloon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Name's Tommy Keever. Sure feels sorry for that boy. That's his trouble. His dad. Keever's the town drunk. Not just a plain ordinary drunk. Keever's a mean drunk. Hates everybody. Keever hates the whole world. Come on, Doc. Sure don't want to miss this. Tashman says we gotta move. She threw all our clothes out of the room. She says we gotta be out by 12 o'clock. Oh, she did, did she? You tell that old battle axe that we paid our rent, we're not moving anywhere. Until next Monday. Well, Dad... Now, get out of here! Sloan's no place for a kid. It's no place for you either, Dad. Let's move our stuff. Not today. I got other business. Please, Dad. I'll ask you just once more. Stay away from that hotel. Get out of here! Cut that out. We'll have none of that rough stuff in here. You kid, get out of here. You don't belong. make you clean that up. But I'm close enough. I want to see the president. I want to see him, too. Another fellow I want to see is Colonel Dodge. Teddy's Rough Riders. You'll introduce the president if this crowd will give him a chance. Citizens of Midvale, Mayor Smith, fellow Americans, the man I am about to introduce, the man who will step through that door, is a man who has fulfilled every promise he ever made. Fellow Americans, with a feeling of high honor and humble respect, I present to you, President Theodore Roosevelt. chased the boy out of Midbay. If Tommy had left the road, he would have gotten away. I had a fine team, but no man in a buggy cross-country can catch a man on a saddle horse. 
Tommy was wounded, hanging from the saddle. He was hurt. The horse he stole from the hitch rail kept running instinctively down the middle of the road. shoot Colonel Dodge. I didn't try to shoot Colonel Dodge. You mean you tried to shoot the president? No, I didn't try to shoot him either. I shot clear over the roof of the hotel. Where'd you get this gun, you little rat? That's my business. No, it's my business. Where'd you get this gun? I don't think it's any of our business. The boy tried to shoot the president. It's a matter for the Secret Service. I didn't try to shoot him. Then who did you try to shoot? Nobody. I just... Well, I... I, I better patch him up here. He's bleeding pretty bad. I'll see you hang for this. Take it easy, Sheriff. He's not a man, he's just a boy. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The president is all right. The boy's shots hit no one, and I understand he is in the sheriff's custody. The president will speak to you just as soon as we feel sure that this trouble is over. And the president wishes to thank you all very, very much for your patience. Doctor, how old did you say that boy was? Oh, 16 or 17, Colonel. Seems like a normal American boy. I wonder why he fired those shots. 16 or 17. Just my boy's age. Come on, Doctor. Tommy, the Colonel just asked you a question. Why don't you answer it man to man? We're your friends, Tommy. We're just trying to find out why you shot at that balcony. I didn't. Honest, I didn't. Just answer the question, Tommy. Colonel, this boy is obviously a case of adolescent schizophrenia, uh, sometimes referred to in Latin as dementia precox. And now translate it into plain English, the terms of the layman. Uh, thank you, Major. Uh, would you gentlemen mind leaving us alone for a moment, please? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, not you, Dr. Baxter. What's the matter with this boy? Can you help him? I don't know, Colonel. I'll do the best I can. That's all I can promise. That's all anyone can promise. I don't know why you did it, but I guess you had your reasons. I won't press any charges, Tommy. You mean, sir... You mean you're gonna let me go? No one was hurt but you yourself. And I hope you get well again soon. Real soon. So long, Tommy. So long, Colonel. And thanks. Doctor, I heard the bell, but I just couldn't get here any faster. Now, we want to ask you a few questions about that Kieber boy. Oh. Well, personally, I, I think he's a good boy, even with that drunken father of his. I don't know. It's hard to believe that Tommy Kieber would try to shoot the president or Colonel Dodge. It's hard for us to believe, too, Miss Tashman. Yeah. That's why we're here. Well, I spent all afternoon and part of tonight trying to find out where Tommy Kieber got the gun he fired at the hotel. A hardware store at Elkton. They say they sold that to your husband about ten years ago. Yes, it looks like the same one. But I have always kept it, even after he died. But then again, you know, guns and me don't go too good together. It's gone. But that must 
be the gun. Sheriff, do you really think the boy took it? So now we know where Tommy got the gun. What we still don't know is why he blasted away at the hotel this morning. But won't he tell you? Tommy won't tell us a thing. One minute we think he meant business with the gun. Then again, we can't believe he meant any bodily harm. Maybe the doctor was right when he said that Tommy has two personalities. Whose coat is this, Miss Tashman? Oh, it's Kiva's. It's an old army coat. He probably picked it up in some saloon. Whoever owned this coat was a sergeant in the U.S. Army. You can see where he tore the stripes off of it. Maybe that is Kiever's coat. Maybe he was in the Army once. That's what I mean. Kiever? <laughs> Kiever's not the type of man to ever belong to anybody's Army. That man never learned how to live. He could never learn how to die. You don't think much of him, do you, Miss Tashman? How could I? Don't tell me he ever was a soldier. I know a soldier when I see what my husband, my husband died at San Juan Hill. My husband rode with Teddy Roosevelt, Lieutenant Wayne Tashman. They fought that battle side by side. Who put the bullet holes in that picture? He did. Kiever? Yes, Kiever, last night. He was drunk again. So I tried to take the gun away from him, but he fired straight at the picture. This is what I think of him, he said. Is that when you ask him to move? Oh, I didn't ask him to move. I, I ordered him to move. What kind of a man is it that fires a gun at the picture, eh? Don't get your dander up, Nell. <laughs> at least he only shot at the picture. Or did he? What do you mean, Doc? I'm wondering if maybe Kiever wasn't carrying a grudge against Teddy Roosevelt. I'd like to catch up with that presidential train. Do you have any idea where it stops next? Roseville Junction, about daybreak. I'll be there. Can I take this coat with me? Yes, of course. You ain't taking that coat anywhere, Doc. Where's Tommy? Where's my boy? He's over in the Midvale Hospital, and he's doing all right. You leave him alone. Hospital? Get this man out of here. Sheriff, don't you stand there? Get him out! Get out! Get out, you dick! I'll get out! I'll get out, you old bag! Oh. 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 All right, Keeper. I haven't got anything I can hold you on, but out of this house you go and stay out. Take it easy, Sheriff. He's a sick man. Come on. And a man like that? You call sick? He's an alcoholic. Then he should be in prison for the rest of his life. Prison's no place for a man like that. It's a disease. Disease? Well, then why don't you doctors find a cure for it? Someday I hope we will. But it's a mental thing. Mental. Somewhere, somehow, we'll find a cure for it. Thanks for your help, Miss Tashman. Oh. The road over the hills to Rosedale Junction is a little shorter than the route the railroad took. By early morning, I was there. The presidential train coming into Roseville Junction was right on time. So was I. Outside the depot, I recognized one of the government men that had been guarding the president in Midvale. I told him I'd like to see the president's aide, Colonel Dodge. He said he'd board the train and relay my message for me to wait inside the depot. Dr. Baxter, I got your message. I'm surprised to see you. You must have driven all night. I imagine my horses are a little more tired than I am. Colonel, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes, if you can spare the time. Yes, the president was asking me about that boy. What'd you find out? I haven't found out too much yet, but I've been doing some checking on his father, and I thought maybe you might be able to help me. Any way I can. I have reason to believe that the boy's father might have been in the Army. I thought there might be a slim chance that you'd remember him. Well, there's a lot of men in the Army, Doctor. What outfit was he in? I don't really know. What was the man's name? Name was Kiever, a three-striper, I believe. Sergeant Kiever. How could I ever forget him? Yes, he served with the Rough Riders. The word served is incorrect when applied to Kiever. Jack Kiever? Sergeant Jack Kiever. He was the only coward we ever had in the Rough Riders. He hid in a ditch with a bottle while the rest of the boys stormed the hill. That man, if you can call him a man, cost the lives of seven Rough Riders. 
He was responsible for 62 casualties. What happened to him after San Juan Hill, I mean? As captain, it was my duty to report him to our commanding officer. I did. I reported him to Colonel Teddy Roosevelt. We had Kiever up in the general court-martial. We had him drummed out of the army. Dishonorable discharge. But let's get on with it. What's this got to do with the boy? Kiever. That was the boy's name. His father. But I don't believe the boy tried to shoot the president. In fact, I think he tried to save his life. Save his life? Yours, too. And what you just told me about the boy's father convinces me. Well, Colonel, I won't take up any more of your time. You've been a great help. What do you think really happened back there at Midvale? I'd rather not say until I have a little more proof, but I'm going to ride back to Midvale now and have a talk with the boy. Mm. Well, I'll look forward to hearing from you. I think you'll be hearing from me real soon. Bye, Colonel. Good luck, Doctor. Thank you. Good morning, Doctor. Morning. Where's Tommy? Well, he wanted to get up, so I helped him get his clothes on, and he's out on the porch getting some sun. How's he feeling? Restless. He didn't sleep very well last night, even with the sedatives. But at least he's finally stopped talking in his sleep. You been talking in his sleep? Quite a bit. I'd like to show you something. Last night, Tommy asked his father to bring around this suitcase. It was locked, and Tommy had the key hidden in his shoe. He didn't open it until after his father had gone. Well, that's a picture of West Point, the graduating class. Apparently, Tommy wants to be a soldier. And look here, these are the textbooks they use at West Point. And he has lots of pictures like that. Pictures of Colonel Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. Apparently, Tommy's a great admirer of the president. That's what I don't understand. If Tommy so admired Teddy Roosevelt, then why did he try to shoot him? He didn't. But I was down at the hotel. I saw it with my own eyes. You didn't see him try to shoot the president. You want to know what I think's really wrong with Tommy? He has a case of torn loyalties. On one part is a deep, natural love for his country. The other part is a natural love for his father. Tommy's all mixed up. You had no right to open that. It's none of your business. Oh, Tommy, I was just trying to help you. We're on your side, Tommy. And when you're old enough, we'd like to see you go to West Point. You do want to go, don't you? Sure. But how can I? My own dad was a coward at San Juan Hill. What use would they have for me? It's the wrong attitude, Tommy. You can go to West Point if you really set your heart to it. It takes more than setting your heart. Tommy? Why don't you and I have a little talk, man to man? If you'll tell me the truth, maybe we can make a deal. You keep on going to school and try as hard as you can and make good marks, and I'll do everything I can to get you into West Point. But who... who'll get me the appointment? President Theodore Roosevelt and Colonel Dodge. But first, you have to tell me the truth about what happened down at the hotel. You took that gun from Mrs. Cashman's rooming house, didn't you? Yes, sir. You didn't intend to shoot anybody. You figured that when you fired that shot into the air, it would attract everyone's attention and stop your dad from shooting, didn't you? Well, sir, I... I, I... Tommy, you're not protecting him by lying. Your father in a drunken stupor was out to get revenge against the president and Colonel Dodge. He's a sick man, and he blames them instead of himself for the mess he's got his life into. Tommy, you can't go on forever living in the shadow of another man's mistake. 
You won't have to, Tommy. You and me, we're getting out of here. We got things to do. We'll start a new life. Keeper, put that gun down. You'll keep out of this, Doc. Come on, Tommy. I got the wagon right outside. Nobody's gonna take you away from me, son. I'll kill anybody who tries. Keever, you've lived half of your life hiding behind a bottle. I don't blame you for that. But there's one thing I do blame you for. And that's trying to hide behind your own son. Why don't you do something right for once? Why don't you go away and let that boy alone? Mighty pretty nurse you got here, Doc. Sure hate to mess her up with a Colt 44. But tell her to mind her own business! No, Doc. No. Come on, Tommy! You better go with him, Doc. Before he hurts somebody. He don't know what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing! Son, come on! Please keep my suitcase for me, will you? I'll send for it later. Oh, yes, yes, Tommy. Yes, they're West Point pictures. All your son's dreams are wrapped up in that suitcase. Doctor, we've got to do something. That man's desperate. about this. I'm sorry. I'll bet you are. Get out of it! that he wasn't scared anymore. You can always remember one thing, Tommy. He died like a man. That year, Teddy Roosevelt won the election and returned to the White House for another term. Cadet Keever graduated with honors from West Point. On October 12, 1908,
Colonel Dodge wrote me a letter saying that Tommy Kiever had been cited for bravery in the Philippines. President Roosevelt, as Commander-in-Chief, confirmed Kiever's appointment as Captain in the United States Army. I am happy that the faith I had in Tommy Kiever was well founded.